welcome to AETCM YouTube channel. Today we will be discussing about the various laboratory tests which are used in COVID-19. You might have heard about RT-PCR, uh, NAT, antigen test, antibody test, pool test. Let us try to declutter all these things in this session. But before going into the topic proper, it's important for us to understand that what are the various things which influence a test result. One, the specimen collection. So the test result is hugely based upon the way the specimen is collected. Two, which specimen is collected at what phase of the disease. So as you know, the usual specimens which are collected is either an upper airway or upper respiratory sample or a lower respiratory sample as in a bronchial alveolar lavage. There are tests being done on saliva. There can be other body fluids also depending upon the involvement of that area can be tested for RT-PCR. Three, the time of collection in relation to the course of the disease. The early phases as you know uh, there is good yield with an upper respiratory sample. Four, the different laboratory test methods and kits. This is very important. Uh, for each category of test, there is a lot of commercial kits available. So the sensitivity, specificity, or basically the reliability of the test varies among the test kits. And five, the overall laboratory facilities and the trained manpower in that center. So these are the things which you need to keep in mind regarding the factors which influence the test result. But now let us see what does the similarities are or the differences between the three tests. We can broadly classify these three tests under the following categories. That is, one is the molecular diagnostics, two is the antigens, three is the serology. So first we will deal with the molecular test. So what is this test type? It is, it tries to detect the virus. Of course, it's a diagnostic test. As we move on, we will know that the antigen test and the, uh, the, the molecular test are the diagnostic tests. While the serological test cannot be employed for the purpose of diagnosis. So what method does the molecular test use? Broadly, we can call it as the nuclear, nucleic acid amplification test to detect the viral RNA. So that is uh, better known as the NAT test, right? Nucleic acid amplification test. And the most commonest platform which is used for doing the NAT test in our part of the world is RT-PCR. There are also other platforms like LAMP. LAMP is Again, RT-LAMP, that is reverse transcription loop mediated isothermal amplification. And also there is CRI-SPR. So these are various platforms in which RT-PCR can be done. And what does it do? It will tell you regarding the current infection. Okay. What are the samples which are usually done for RT-PCR? You can do it in a nasal or a throat swab, which is the most commonest used specimen. You can do it in saliva or you can use the bronchial alveolar lavage. Now the next important thing is to understand the testing window. So the testing window for RT-PCR or the molecular test is from day one to day 28 after the onset of symptoms. The optimal time frame is between three to 12. But again, it's imperative for us to understand that during the later phases of the disease, a positive RT-PCR need not be equated to a true infectivity of the patient. I hope I'm clear on that point. Now, another key thing when we are depending upon the RT-PCR is the test turnaround time. Usually, this is one of the tests which is little time consuming. So usually the results can come in the same day or might even take week depending upon the location and the test capability of the sender. That said, compared to the conventional RT-PCRs, now we have point-of-care PCRs, the commonly known as uh, commercial, some of the 
kits which are available are the expert, gene expert, and then you have uh, TrueNAT, etc., where the, the turnaround time of the test is reduced to between one to two hours. But of course, the, the, the reliability of the test comes down a bit compared to the conventional RT-PCR. So this is regarding the molecular test. Now we will move on to the antigen test. Here again, if you ask me the test type, it again detects the virus. Uh, the diagnostic test, yes, it is a diagnostic test, but here it detects the viral proteins in the nasal cavity. Now, this also detects the current infection in a patient and the platform usually used for antigen test is lateral flow. Here again, the samples which are used is either a nasal or a throat swab and the testing window is usually between 1 to 28 days after the onset of symptoms. Optimal day is similar to our RT-PCR that is between 3 to 12. The real advantage here is it's a rapid point of care test and usually the turnaround time is approximately 15 minutes. Okay, so that is with the molecular test and the antigen test. Now let's see what is the serology test. So that's more commonly called as the antibody test. Okay, again this is used more of a, uh, for understanding the prevalence, the zero prevalence in a community, and it cannot be too much relied on in your used in the diagnostic pathway. So it basically detects the presence of either IgA or IgM or and or the IgG antibodies against SARS-CoV-2. What does it measure? It usually, the IgG usually measures the past exposure to SARS-CoV-2. Here again, uh, uh, the platform technology is again lateral flow or ELISA or CA. Here the blood sample, unlike the other two tests, which is used as a blood sample, it's a blood drop, either a plasma serum or whole blood or even can be done by a finger stick. So what is the testing window for uh, for the antibody test? You can do the, uh, you can get a positive IgA or IgM from day five after the symptom onset. The optimal days are between 14 to 21. And for the IgG, it usually becomes positive after the 14th day of the symptoms and can remain positive for up to six weeks. Now regarding the test turnaround time, usually the test results come in the same day and again, depending upon the testing capabilities can take up till one to three days. But again, here we have the point of care option where you can get the test results within 15 to 30 minutes. So I believe this gives you a broad idea of uh, uh, the various tests which are available and also uh, where to use what. Uh, I am not too much commenting on the sensitivity and specificity of each test because though we consider RT-PCR as the gold standard, uh, again, within RT-PCR, once you move on to the point of care test, and then especially with uh, uh, as we move on to the antigen test, depending upon the kits, uh, the, the sensitivity and specificity seems to vary a lot between even the specificity varying from 60s to 95, and the sensitivity again varying from 60 to uh, uh, 90 in, in uh, between the test kits itself. But the general rule is that RT-PCR has a good specificity. So that means that once uh, the patient undergoes a test and if he is indeed positive, then it really is a positive. But there can be a subgroup of patients who can be uh, shown as negative in the results, but might have, have the, might uh, be really having COVID-19. So uh, that's a brief idea about the various tests. What are we going to do with all these test results? So what's the real clinical interpretation from, from this test? I would conclude by saying that a true, basically a positive NAT test or a direct antigen test is strongly suggestive of the current infection due to its high specificity, but moderate sensitivity. And the patient can be reassured that the clinician is confident that they have COVID-19 and it should be managed in accordance with local policies regarding positive cases. In contrast, negative tests need to be interpreted with caution and a single negative SARS-CoV-2 test in a patient with strongly suggestive symptoms should not be relied upon to exclude COVID-19. In this situation, it should still be safer for the patient to be treated as a positive case and local policies regarding retesting and isolation should be followed. I hope the message is clear. Thank you.